Recently, we've all seen this video where Danielle Smith, through soft light and with a gentle voice, professes to care about Alberta's children. The sad, cruel reality though, is that when you listen to her words, you realize that embedded in those sets of announcements are multiple attacks on the safety and the health and the fundamental human rights of thousands upon thousands of Albertans. So we've taken Danielle Smith's video full of claims and we've shown it to a bunch of different Albertans directly impacted by what she plans to do. And here's what they had to say. Dr. Ted Jablonski, I am a trans health specialist. First, it's on the issue of gender reassignment treatments for minors. For minors age 17 and under, top and bottom gender reassignment surgeries will not be permitted. For so let, let us stop right there. So to be very clear, uh, we do not do bottom surgery uh, in any patient under 18 anywhere in Canada. So to try to ban or, or disallow that, it, it's not happening. Patricia Zentilli, she, her, and a parent of a trans youth. For a minor age 15 and under, the government will require parental notification and consent for a school to alter the name or pronouns of a child. For 16 and 17 year olds who choose to alter their name or pronouns, Parents do not need to give consent, but they must be notified. Yeah, it's, it's hard to watch. So when my daughter um, changed her pronouns and uh, her name, um, it was kind of like a no, no big deal. My child has known who she was since she could talk. Um, she's told everyone that's who she is and we followed her lead. You can't force a kid to be anything or not be anything. I can barely get my daughter to have a bath or <laughs> you know wear a coat <laughs> on a cold day so I certainly can't force her to be something she's not or to not be something that she is and that's not for me to say um, or anyone else. Jane Oxenbury, registered psychologist. We know that nearly all parents, even those who may disagree with the decision of their children, will love and care for their children no matter what choices they make. However, in the handful of rare situations where one or both of the parents reject or become abusive to a child who identifies as transgender, we have child protection laws that will be strictly enforced. Sorry, it's just very hard to not deeply react to that. Why are we even talking about the fact that the children will have this wonderful endpoint of going into the child welfare system. It's not a wonderful endpoint. And we could tr stop these issues so much sooner. And sometimes children will even leave before the families tell them that because they're already getting those messages physically, emotionally, or overhearing conversations. And so they end up on the streets. And we know for a fact that 20 to 40% of our homeless population are kids are dealing with gender and sexual diversity issues. That's a lot of people. I don't think we really want our kids ending up on the street sleeping rough. For each instance, a teacher intends to give formal instruction on these subjects. Yeah, for, for um, a party that really touts itself as cutting red tape, that sure is a lot of red tape. This is a, a drastic step back that we have to opt in um, and that we need parent permission for any sort of curriculum. Um, parents already have the power to opt out um, in the curriculum. They have that choice, so this, this just needlessly flips it on its head. It's inevitable that students will not receive a comprehensive sex education as they would now just because of this extra layer of red tape that parents need to opt in for just the simplest fact is a student forgetting their papers or a parent not signing their papers. Regardless of where they are on this issue, that happens. That happens every day in, in classrooms. It would just needlessly create students who would not receive 
a good education. I'm Jen Kish. I'm an Olympic bronze medalist in the sport of rugby. And I'm Shawnee Kish. I'm a singer, songwriter, and three-time Juno-nominated artist. I strongly believe that those who were born male but have transitioned to or identify as female are owed the opportunity to meaningfully participate in sport. However, there are obvious biological realities that give transgender female athletes a massive competitive advantage over women and girls. Danielle Smith, I wonder how much she watches sports. It leaves me speechless um, because it's, it's policies coming from a belief system. I cannot say this enough. I, I know what it's like to be excluded as an athlete um, based off my sex due to a belief system that females have no place in football. It's my belief that the real issue in sport right now with females is that we lack funding and the support and to create a separate division for trans athletes further narrows that support because it's just not there. For children age 15 and under, puberty blockers and hormone therapies for the purpose of gender reassignment or affirmation will also not be permitted. So uh, th this is very, very problematic. Uh, the notion of disallowing or banning puberty blockers uh, 15 and under uh, is, is going to really handcuff us uh, from a medical point of view. This is when puberty blockers are needed. This is when we use them. If we can only be allowed to use them at age 16 or 17, it's already too late. Most youth are already halfway through or three quarters of the way through puberty. So trying to block it at that point doesn't help us at all. There's a lot of talk about uh, the problem of making a decision which has irreversible consequences. Puberty blockers are considered reversible therapies. That's why we use them, so we don't have to make a decision about irreversible ther therapies if it's premature or if we need to give a family or a youth a little bit more time. So puberty blockers are fully reversible therapies when used properly. Seeing this information land on my 13-year-old daughter was really hard, <laughs> really hard for me because she now knows the, the premier of the province she lives in is not comfortable with who she is or wants to get involved in decision making that is between her family and her and the team of doctors and experts that we have. This is always done in discussion with family. This is a process. <laughs> this is not uh, just a uh, youth uh, wanders into our clinic and we make it as uh, a decision to just start puberty blockers on the spot. This is in consultation with psychologists, counselors, uh, Meta Clinic at Alberta Children's Hospital, multidisciplinary clinic. Parents, again, are always involved. They have to sign a consent in order to move this forward. There's a process. What I did see was this premier justifying a policy off the back end of a video that she saw online that relates to a rugby player who she misidentified as transgender. This policy basically is nothing more than a comment section on Twitter. What genuinely concerns me about these policies, uh, as an Indigenous person, a two-spirit person, how at risk this puts our young people who already struggled what it's like to be a young person who struggles with their identity. We know as soon-to-be parents that we are going to love and accept our child for who they are and who they choose to be and how they choose to walk in this world. But we also know that that's not the case, unfortunately, for some kids here in Canada. Hi, I'm Tony Harris. I am a fitness professional and owner of Action Potential Fitness. You know, I transitioned late in life, so uh, as a youth, this wasn't even something that was a possibility. Um, but if I could think back to what it would have been like if it was a possibility and that was robbed from me, that would have been soul destroying. We all deserve to be able to identify however we want to and be addressed however we want to. I, I really feel badly for the kids um, and I do everything I can on my part to support them and provide services uh, that are accessible but there's only so much that we can do if these policies are put into place. So you hear a lot of people talking about how these youth are being pushed in the direction of exploring their gender identity and that we're encouraging them to use pronouns or use different names, and that's actually simply not the case. We're simply giving them the ability to explore that on their own in a safe and uh, supported environment. Nobody is trying to make kids trans. I, I can tell you as a transhuman, 
If I could be anything other than trans, I really would be. I celebrate my identity, but this life is not one that I would wish on anybody with the current climate. It's just not. So what does that mean for you? What next? Well, what we hope you do is that you'll share this information with your neighbors, with your family, with your colleagues. Let's have a conversation in Alberta that's actually based on the real issue and the real experiences. And then sign our petition below. Let's make sure that our government actually protects our kids. All of this misinformation pits Albertans against each other. This is not about just parental rights and youth rights, it's about human rights in general.